This is Covering the Spread, part of the FanDuel Podcast Network. Big day and big times in World Cup action because we got USA versus Iran coming up today. We're recording this right before that match. So we will not be discussing that match. We're going to talk some World Cup with Dr. Ed Fang getting his read on some takeaways pre-USA Iran. We'll talk about that match tomorrow on the show with Ed as well. Talk about some huge college football games. And later on today, I'll be giving my first look at NFL Week 13. This is covering the spread right here on the FanDuel Podcast Network and NumberFire.com. My name is Jim Sonis. I am a senior writer and analyst for numberfire.com joined here as mentioned by dr ed feng find his work at the powerrank.com and the football analytics show as well ed happy match day to you how you doing i'm doing pretty well recording this before the u.s game and excited for honestly all the world cup that is about to happen it's been kind of rough obviously because there's a lot of work to do with american football I haven't caught quite as many games as i like but i've been sneaking some in so it's been it's been fantastic Yeah, and like I said, we'll talk about that U.S. match uh, tomorrow on the show. When we go through the college football um, conference championships, we'll talk about those tomorrow on the show. We'll break down that game there. But wanted to begin more broadly here, Ed, and talk about other takeaways you had from the World Cup thus far. We had a check-in last week to talk about uh, your initial takeaways. In the past week or so, what has stood out to you in terms of how it impacts the way you view this, this event from a betting perspective? Yeah, it's been pretty interesting. Like XG really hasn't been a great tool yet. Uh, expected goals. Uh, it's the system that quantifies the, uh, you know, basically the probability that any shot goes in. And so you add up all those probabilities and you get an expected number of goals. Mm-hmm. There's multiple sites, uh, multiple sites. There's multiple accounts on Twitter that you can follow. But, uh, you know, there's a there's one account, XG Philosophy, that said that, you know, XG is not doing a particularly good job of predicting the outcome of winners and uh that just means there's going to be regression there and uh we're gonna we're gonna see that be uh, a more useful tool heading forward so uh you know it's been kind of fun to follow that one of the you know one of my favorite matches was uh germany spain over this weekend and the germans really needed a win and then they went down one nothing and spain really dominated the game in terms of possession and I thought played a lot better than Germany, but Germany is still Germany and they created plenty of opportunities. They did get the equalizer and it was interesting to see, even though Germany really got outplayed, they, they really didn't play the game that they wanted to. Uh, they had a higher XG in that game. They were able to create some high quality chances despite not having barely any of the possession at least compared to what they normally get. So that was a fantastic match. We'll talk a little bit later, uh, a little bit more about that group, uh, which I find fascinating. And um, yeah, it's been a lot of fun. So when you're talking about the, ex- the, the expected goals not being super predictive, you were thinking that's flukiness, right? Is that kind of what you're saying, where you would expect that to revert back towards expectation going forward? Yeah, absolutely. Uh, I, I do... I do think it's a useful tool. Um, I'm trying to think of some other examples, but um, I mean, USA versus Wales was pretty slanted. I think that was because of a penalty. Uh, it depends on which source yeah. you look at. Some sources sure. put the penalty separate, whereas yeah, others sh- include it in the XG and it yeah. creates this like he- these huge discrepancies. Absolutely. So a penalty kick is uh, three fourths of a goal, no matter who takes it, no matter who's, in the who no matter who is goalkeeping and and that's an important thing to recognize about xg is that it's agnostic to who is taking the shot and who's defending uh it tries to get an average over all those things there are certainly players like Lionel messi that have exceeded their xg over a pretty broad sample of games um but yes um rhino hanlon is definitely when he puts stuff up on on his twitter account he's the author of net gains which is a fantastic book that i highly recommend that just came out you know he tries to take out penalties and you should do that uh basically penalties tend to be pretty random and not predictive so you know i think us wales yeah wales had the better xg in that game but if you take out the penalty kick it was pretty even and i even thought that was misleading i think the us Mm -hmm. played better uh, the Wales definitely had some chances in the second half, but I didn't think they were the best of uh, the best of chances. So 
uh, as with every metric and tool that you're going to use, it requires some nuance and, uh, yeah, we'll see. Uh, I, I definitely think it's, I I'm definitely interested in using it as a tool moving forward. For sure. And we'll see if that does regress as the event advances. But let's spin this forward now and talk about the betting markets right now in the World Cup. When you look at the markets, whether it be individual matches the next couple of days, uh, you know, the latter stage of the group betting, where are you seeing value right now? Yeah, absolutely. This is, well, if you don't follow soccer, it might not seem like a very square bet. But I think if you follow soccer, uh, it's kind of a square bet. So Germany needs to beat Costa Rica to make it into the group stage they are heavily heavily favored to do that um i think the markets imply something like an 87 percent chance that they win outright um and germany is a is is an over team they rate much better on offense um this stretches all the way back to euro last year uh you can look at a lot of things this is this is an over team and with this costa rica match just uh okay so if they win they need to win and then there, there is some potential, you know, if, if uh, so if Spain loses, which is unlikely to happen, if Spain loses to Japan, then they would be in a goal differential battle with Spain because they would both have the same number of points. They would both have four points. Spain actually beat Costa Rica 7 nothing. They're not going to quite – they're not probably not going to score seven goals. That is unlikely. But um, anyways, the reason I mention that is there's a lot of incentive to run up the score here because it is going to be a matter of goal differential. Um, if Japan ties Spain, then it also comes down to goal differential uh, with Japan. If it is a matter of goal differential with Japan, then then Germany should be okay. If it's a matter of goal differential with Spain, they're, they're probably not okay. Anyways, the point is that there's plenty of incentive to score. Germany is an explosive offensive team. Um, I like over three and a half goals. So usually the 50-50 point is at two and a half goals. This is such an odd game. Uh, just being the last uh, match of the group stage with the different incentives that the kind of 50, 50 point is, uh, is at three and a half goals. But um, at, at FanDuel right now, it's, it's minus minus one eighteen to go over. I'm roughly estimating it about 55% to go over three and a half goals in this game. I think there's value. It's kind of a square play, but I do think there's going to be a lot of goals. I do think Germany busts out. There's so much talent on this team. Costa Rica is not good. And Costa Rica, you know, it's interesting. They have, they've had an elite goalkeeper in Navas for a long time. Played a long time at Real Madrid. Uh, has been with PSG the last couple of years. Actually hasn't touched the field for his club yet this year. So um, Costa Rica is bad. Germany's good. Uh, I expect this to go over three and a half goals. Now, when you're calling it a square bet, are you saying that because it's an over on a very high total? Is that what leads you to, to say it's kind of like a square bet despite yeah. being a good bet? Yeah, I mean, I think usually the idea is that you're, you're betting unders on totals, and, and I think in general that is correct. And honestly, like, I mean, just look at the scores that we've seen in this World Cup. Like, unders have been hitting like yes. like mad. There, there haven't been a lot of goals. Um. So, yeah, that, I think the, the idea that Germany scores goals is – you know, I mean, they're they're kind of an over team. They're kind of like a public team. Yeah. Um, but I, I do think it's going to happen. I think the numbers support it. And uh, I like a lot of goals in that match. OK, well, Ed, we're going to have you on to talk uh, some more World Cup tomorrow. We'll break down the U.S. Uh, versus Iran match. We'll talk about some other soccer stuff. But also, more importantly, we'll get to uh, talk about your Michigan Wolverines. <laughs> talk about them against Purdue. We'll break down that and talk a lot of other good stuff. But, Ed, it was a pleasure having you on for today. A double dose of Ed for this week. Uh, enjoy the match. We'll talk to you once again tomorrow. Thanks, Jim. Talk to you soon. All righty. Again, check out Ed on Twitter at the power rank. You can check out his work um, at thepowerrank.com and check out his podcast as well. The football analytics show we will have Ed on again tomorrow to break down some college football and talk about that USA versus Iran matchup. We'll get to my first look at NFL week number 13 and uh, also recap last week in just one second. But first, make sure you are subscribed to covering the spread wherever you get your podcasts. We, of course, are on Apple Podcasts, Spotify, Stitcher, Google Podcasts, 
you name it, you can find us there. And while you're there, if you like what you hear, leave us a rating and review as well. All these shows do go up on the FanDuel YouTube page as well. The NFL Week 13 is Sunday Million for Daily Fantasy is officially live on FanDuel. Showcase your NFL knowledge and construct your best nine-player roster while staying under the salary cap. Then follow along using FanDuel's live scoring feature to compete for your share of $1.25 million in cash prizes, including $250,000 to first place, all for just a $5 entry fee. Sunday's approaching quickly, so head to FanDuel and submit your lineup today. Eligibility restrictions apply. Go to FanDuel.com or download the FanDuel app for more details. Let's dig in now to week number 13 in the NFL and break down what my numbers are saying there. And for me... You know, you see these these numbers on Twitter like, oh, you know, underdogs are covering at a 55 percent rate or underdogs are if you're, you know, betting the money line every week, you're have this ROI. I can't stand those numbers. I think they are ridiculous. Books are going to account for that eventually. Stuff like that. I do not actively seek out stuff like this. Just so happens this week that my three favorite bets are all money uh, money lines and underdogs. So I'm not seeking that out. I hate stuff like that. I think it's ridiculous. It's not predictive. It's not going to be helpful for you long term, but it does happen to be where my numbers are pointing me towards three underdogs on the money line this week. And that does include both New York teams. I got the Giants. Uh, they're at plus one away to FanDuel. You can still get a better number than that elsewhere. So shop around on that, facing off with Washington. My betting models, I've got two now. Both of them are equal, both adjusted for injuries, uh, personnel, stuff like that. Kind of running both in tandem the rest of the way to see which one back tests better to decide which one I want to use heading into 2023. So they're competing models right now. But both of them have the Giants slightly higher than Washington right now. They played well last week, despite not having Wandell Robinson there. He's missed some time before, so it's not a huge deviation for them. I think Darius Slayton's a pretty good player, and having him with Saquon Barkley, that's potentially enough to keep this team afloat, despite all the injuries they've had. They've got a rest advantage over Washington here. They're playing at home. Washington's stretch, where they've won six of their past seven games, has been very impressive, but the passing offense... Once you adjust the teams they faced, hasn't been that good. I know they're like, you know, again, Taylor Heineke fever, but I'm expecting regression hit eventually. And that could wind up being here. My numbers again are the Giants favorite in this game. So I'll take the money line at plus 108, shop around, see what number you can get on that. But um, I think that the Giants, the best number you can get is going to be a pretty good number on them with where things stand right now. Other New York team, obviously the Jets, uh, they're plus 134 at FanDuel to win, plus 140 a couple other spots against Minnesota, and I will take that as well. I have the Vikings favored by 1.39 in my traditional model, my old school model, the one I use uh, for my preseason numbers this year, but the new model actually has the Jets favored in this game. I'm not sure I'd go that far, personally. That seems a little bit a little tough, but I also understand why that's the case. The Jets' defense in that model ranks first in the league by a pretty decent margin. And their offense has been better than you'd think in early downs. A lot of their issues have come on late downs where, you know, Zach Wilson had his issues. He would get under pressure and make some tough mistakes. So late downs has been tougher, but early down efficiency, they've been pretty good. I have not bumped up this offense to Mike White yet because... I'm not, I mean, he's, you know, a former fifth round pick. He was their third string quarterback coming into the year. There are reasons those things occur. So I don't want to bump them up for Mike White. I actually have a bump down for the Jets right now because uh, their rushing game probably going to suffer with no Brees Hall. It has suffered with no Brees Hall. Michael Carter, I don't think will go in this game either. So I actually have the Jets bumped down from their baseline here. But if White actually does provide a boost, that'd give us even more value here. And I do think the new model is overvaluing the Jets because it's so high in their defense, but I don't disagree to the point where I pass up uh, the money line of plus 134. Their implied win odds there, 42.7%. And again, even my model that isn't as high on them shows the Jets as a value at this number. So I'm not bumping them up for Mike White. I think it was fun what he did Sunday. I thought that it was encouraging to see his teammates be jacked up for him and stuff like that. Uh, I'm not bumping them up for Mike White. Despite not doing that, I'm still showing value. So I don't think there's a shot they get worse than what they were. That seems like a tough go. I think even is probably more likely. If they stay even, 
they're a value. So I do like the Jets plus 134. Chop around again. Plus 140, I think it's probably the better number you can get. But even at plus 134, if you're restricted to just FanDuel Sportsbook, I would take that as well. So both uh, Giants and Jets showing value for me on the money line. The other money line I'm taking is the Dolphins at plus 172 against the 49ers. I am very worried about the Dolphins' offensive line in this game because Taron Armstead's not going to play. That's a big deal against a very good defensive line. And I have that baked into my numbers. I have a downgrade for the Dolphins in for Armstead being out. Austin Jackson's also not fully healthy. But even with those downward adjustments in, I can't get their win odds down this low. The Dolphins rank second in adjusted early down EPA per play by my numbers. And again, that is adjusted for injuries. So that does account for Armstead being out. The Dolphins also top 10 in success rate uh, on late downs. They're ahead of the 49ers in both those numbers. Again, even after a bump up for the 49ers uh, due to Christian McCaffrey. And the defensive side does heavily favor the 49ers. And we haven't seen the Dolphins with a lot of tough tests defensively. They did face Patriots week one, played well there. They beat the Bills at home. Good win there, although that was largely based on Buffalo being kind of weird. So we haven't seen them in spots like this. Both their tackles are banged up. That's tough. But I just think this number is too long. Their implied win, win odds at plus 172 are 36.8%. I've got them above 40. So decent amount of value in the money line. That's why I'm going there versus the spread. Right now, spread is three and a half at FanDuel. It's four at some other spots. I don't mind taking the points, but by my numbers, the better value is on the money line. And our goal as betters is not to, you know, just win the highest percentage of bets. It's to make the most money. And because of that, I'm okay taking where I have the best edge. And the best edge right now is on the Dolphins with their money line at plus 172. I think that's a, a very forgiving number. It's one that I will take. I understand if you want to go to the points. I understand if you want to pass entirely because of the Dolphins offensive line injuries. I can't push back on that at all. Uh, but I do think that the Dolphins are the correct side here. I would also say I haven't bet this yet, but I think there is some value in the total over 46 and a half. There's no wind as of right now in uh, Santa Clara. So some value there. I've not pulled the trigger on that one yet, but considering it, uh, the total of 46 and a half for the Dolphins, the 49ers. I am seeing some value in a few favorites for this week. Uh, the three of them where both my models agree that the favored team is undervalued are the Bucks, the Browns, and the Packers. I have an injury adjustment in for Tristan Worse in the Bucks. I will likely wind up betting them against New Orleans. They're at three and a half right now. I think they're, I'm most likely to go with the money line at minus 186. I've not taken that yet, but uh, weighing it pretty strongly, I'm guessing, I don't know if the Worf stuff is in uh, the market yet. It, it's, it's known that he's not going to play, but it doesn't seem like it's fully accounted for uh, in the market yet. So I kind of want to see if that number can get a little bit more lenient, but probably going to bite on the pack, uh, the Bucks at some point. Packers, minus three against the Bears. I'm assuming for now that both Aaron Rodgers and Justin Fields play but I don't have a great read on the situation. So I'm going to hold off there for now. Maybe we'll get a better read later on this week and I can uh, hopefully bet it before the market moves too much. But as of right now, I'm going to hold off. Um, I'm not going to bet the Bears. I could see myself going at the Packers at minus three, but I want to get a better read on the injury situation there before I actually do wind up going on that one. So holding off on the Packers at minus three right now. As for the Browns, I have value at minus seven against the Texans on them. That offense was really good under Jacoby Brissett. So if I get them a bump up for Deshaun Watson, one of my models actually says they should be favored by 10 in this game. I just don't feel like I want to root for the Browns this week, especially in this game specifically. It feels kind of gross to root for them. So I'm likely just taking the Bucks money line at minus 186. Maybe I'll go spread at minus three and a half. Just kind of getting in those markets uh, before I de decide to dive in. If you want to bet the Browns, I lay the seven instead of going to the money line. Does grade out as one of the better bets this week. I've got their uh, cover odds around 58% in that matchup. So I just have troubles getting there. So if you want to do it, it is a, a bet that grades out well. I just have troubles rooting for them this week. So um, probably not going to get there. But if you want to go there, uh, Browns minus seven does seem to be a good bet right now based on what my numbers are saying. So bets that I'm locking in right now, I've got uh, the Giants money line at plus 108, the Jets money line plus 134. Again, shop around at both those. Dolphins money line plus 172. 
and then likely to fire on the Bucks at minus 186 or minus three and a half, and then showing value on the Browns minus seven if you want to dive in there. So we'll see. Again, uh, we've taken some risks on some money line under- underdogs, but I my numbers say that's the right way. I trust my numbers. They've been grading out pretty well recently, so we will go with that route, despite the fact it is a little bit risky and the reason it's risky is pertinent as we recap last week what went down here on the show. We'll get to the NFL stuff and all that in just a second. Let's start things off here on the college side of things. Good week for Ed. Uh, we just talked to Ed for the World Cup stuff. He had a good week last week in college football. He had TCU minus nine and a half and over 47 and a half in their game against Iowa State. The total closed at 45 and a half. So line moved against him, but TCU went over that by themselves they won that game 62 to 14 so they covered easily they hit the over by themselves great read by adam that one it was uh, a weird reversal where he's had a lot of good movement this year but didn't always get the results this time didn't get the movement vehemently emphatically got the results so good on ed there good week for him i was close to a really good week uh good week i had a good week overall and i felt good about the process behind my week overall the reason I was close is that we almost had the Lions money line. It was plus one thirty or plus three thirty five when we spoke on th- on Wednesday. Closed at plus three forty or plus three thirty, depending on where you grabbed it. Uh, though it got as long as plus three sixty at times, so I didn't get the best number. I know that for sure. Uh, that's frustrating. But the Lions played really well. They benefited from awesome late down efficiency. They struggled to run the ball, uh, but they were super efficient through the air. I thought that they played well. The defense played decent too. So I feel good about the process there. Couldn't quite get uh, the results, but felt pretty good about that one. Other money line I had was the Jags at plus 172. That shortened a decent amount Sunday morning. Not really sure why it shortened then specifically, but it did uh, shorten uh, to about 164, I believe I saw. Uh, 164 for the Jags. So it did shorten eventually, but... Um, I probably should have lost this one, honestly, but Trevor Lawrence, he balled out. He was awesome. And that was part of the, the, the thought process behind the play is that the Jags offense, I thought was underrated. You know, they were playing well in early downs. Uh, they were moving the sticks before third and fourth down. Lawrence was playing well. I thought based on my numbers, he played great there. So they got the win, you know, going for the win, uh, with, with the two point conversion late was nice. I wish I'd gotten there the Lions too, but hey, you know, a plus 172 winner on the, the Jags, that felt good. So I uh, felt good about that. Also mentioned on Monday's show, I'd value on the Steelers at plus 122. I didn't wind up betting that, but they won. Um, so don't get credit for that one on the show, but felt good about my numbers last week and felt good about uh, the way they read that slate. Wish we had gotten the Lions, but overall, good week overall. Ryan Williams, our guest on Wednesday, had like 30,000 close calls this week, like a a billion. He was smart enough to take the points with the Lions instead of the money line. So good on Ryan there. He won that bet, whereas I did not. Good for him. That was nine and a half. They lost by three. So they did cover, did not win, but great teams, uh, great teams cover. So good on Ryan for the call there and good on the Lions for covering for him. He had a push on the Eagles at minus seven. He had Washington minus four. They won that game by six. Titans plus one and a half. Uh, they lost by four Patriots plus two and a half. They lost by a single score Rams plus 14 and a half. They lost by 16. He had the dolphins minus 13. They pulled their starters early one by 15. So got a cover there. He had the Ravens minus four, which was good until that Lawrence really impressive drive late. Uh, he also had the bucks Browns under 42 and a half. That game finished with 40 despite overtime. So, uh, a lot of a lot of close stuff for Ryan that we could have gone awesome, could have been awful, wound up being a five, five, and one. Cause he did have uh the Steelers plus two and a half last night, and they won that game outright. So five, five, and one on spreads and totals for Ryan last week. Could have gone either way, but uh hopefully Ryan was not watching most of this games live because that'd be a sweat. That'd be a sweaty week across the board for him. As for Monday night, the prop stuff, a uh, bit wonky game outside of hitting the Steelers side. Ryan did it, George Pickens, over 43 and a half receiving yards, but touchdowns didn't break in our favor. Ryan also wanted the under at 39 and a half, finished with 41. So again, another uh, close one there. So Monday night rougher, other than the Steelers, uh, him on the spread, my money line there. We'll try to regroup there next week. Uh, next week, Monday night, I believe, is a Tampa Bay game. So I'll have uh, likely something on Tampa Bay on my end there. but. We'll see as week progresses, but um, hopefully Ryan is uh, 
his heart is in check or heart is intact after what was likely a very stressful week from him with a lot of tight swings back and forth throughout that one. We're going to talk more about NFL week number 13 with Ryan coming up on Thursday. That'll be up on the FanDuel YouTube page and up on the Covering the Spread podcast feed in the afternoon. So make sure you subscribe to both those spots to get our full breakdown of week number 13. We'll talk about Chiefs Bengals. We'll talk about uh, probably more about the Dolphins 49ers. We'll probably talk, I would guess, Eagles Titans as well. So a lot of good games on tap for this week. Full breakdown for that coming up on Thursday. Back with more Ed tomorrow as well, breaking down the college football uh, conference championship games. We'll talk about him, talk with him about Michigan, Ohio State, and uh, much more other good stuff to talk about with Ed and the USA versus Iran match there as well for now if you got any questions for me i am on twitter at jim sonnets j-i-m-s-a-n-n-e-s you can also follow the fanduel podcast network at fanduel podcast want to thank you all for tuning in for today enjoy usa versus iran if you listen to this after, uh, before that game gets underway we'll talk to you once again tomorrow to break down that one and talk some college football this has been covering the spread right here on the fanduel podcast network 